Okay, we have a message uh, from Jackson Beckel, I think is how you pronounce that name. Hopefully I'm getting it right. Now this is a very specific one. It says, the air within a cylinder equipped with a piston absorbs 565 joules of heat and expands from an initial volume of 0.10 liters to a final volume of 0.85 liters against an external pressure of one atmosphere. And the question asks, what is the change in internal energy of the air within the piston? What video would help me solve this or, or explain it? Um, that's a great question. I'm going to, if you just give me a second here, I'm going to pull up my video about this. I have a, a video that addresses a very, very similar problem. It's called pressure volume work. So I'm just gonna open up my YouTube studio here and search for that that video. I'll send you a link to it, and you're more than welcome to look at it. And if that's not enough, and if you want to see another video with a pressure volume work problem, I am more than happy to make one. And here is the link. So basically, um, you know, what's happening here is, I'll type it up right here, you have delta, E, which sometimes you'll see it as delta U, that's the uh, internal energy change, is equal to the sum, put another space in that, is equal to the sum of the heat, which is Q, and the work, uh, which is W, right? Now they've given you Q, right? That's pretty, undo that capitalization there. They've given you Q, right? So Q, that would be the 565 joules, right? And then <clears throat> they want you to figure out the work and they want you to add that work once you've figured it out to the, um, the heat. And then you'll, you'll, get, you'll get the internal energy change. So the equation, and in my, in my video on uh, pressure volume work, uh, I actually sort of derive the expression for uh, how to calculate the work um, associated with a volume change against an external constant pressure. So, and the equation that you end up with uh, upon doing that derivation, upon deriving that equation, is that the work is equal to the product or the negative product of the pressure and the change in volume. So you have work equals minus. P delta V. And, you know, writing the word out like that delta is not really, uh, not really cutting it for me. I'm actually going to go in and insert a, a delta symbol because I don't really like writing the, the word out there. I'd rather just, uh, I'd rather just um, use, you know, the symbol, like how it's actually going to look, you know, in your, in your chemistry textbook or on your worksheets or exams or whatever. So you have work equals minus P delta V, right? And I'll go ahead and change the delta up here to a symbol for delta, right? So, and in this equation, right, you know P, right? Because that's 1.00 atmospheres, right? And then you can figure out delta V pretty easily, right? because that's just gonna be the change in volume. It's gonna be your final volume minus your initial volume, right? And it's an expansion, so you know that your delta V is gonna be positive because your final volume is greater than your initial volume. So you said that your final volume was 0 0.85 liters, and we're gonna subtract away from that, what, 0 0.10 liters and that's gonna end up being 0 0.75, whoops, 0 0.75. Why is this not working? Did I accidentally hit the number lock button? <laughs> 0 0.75 liters. So I'll go ahead and uh, highlight some of the important things, right? So we know that the heat is 565 joules and we know that this equation here, 
see if I can make that a different color. Bear with me here. So this equation is what we're going to use to find the work. Um, we know that the pressure is one atmosphere, and we know that your volume change is equal to, whoops, do it this way, 0 0.75 liters, right? How can I highlight this? What am I doing? Oh, I had it. It was right in front of me and I didn't see it. Okay, so what do you think you should do at this point? <laughs> I'm kind of spoon feeding you the whole the whole problem, um, but I wanna sort of get your back and forth participation on this. I don't wanna just solve the whole thing for you. Hopefully at this point, you can at least get started with it and this will sort of get you um, in the right direction on how to move forward. Um, but that would be, you know, a, a good place to start. So Jackson, um, any feedback that you want to provide on that would be would be great. Jackson Beckel says, so subtract P delta V from 565. Uh, yes, although, so when you, when you multiply um, your pressure in atmospheres by your volume in liters, you're not going to get joules, you're going to get liters atmospheres. So there's another step before you, you know, before you subtract the product of the pressure and the change in volume by your, uh, by your heat, you need to convert that product of pressure and volume. You need to convert the work from liters atmospheres to, uh, to joules. And you could probably figure out or, or Google search what the conversion is. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, the pressure volume work video uh, that I that for which I sent you the link that video does show you how to perform that conversion from liters atmospheres to to joules um, so it's all it's all there um, you're more than welcome to to check it out um, but yeah you're, you're definitely correct though you, you're right subtract p delta v from 565 and also make sure that you're following the proper um, sign convention um, when you, I, I like the fact that you said subtract because uh, if you think about it intuitively, right, instead of just sort of looking at, you know, symbols and, and positive and negative signs and stuff like that, like trying to memorize what should be positive, what should be negative. You, if you think about it from a more, you know, intuitive, like what is actually happening here point of view, um, the problem clearly states, the problem that you sent me clearly states that it's an expansion, right? If it's an expansion, that means that uh, work is being done on the surroundings. So the system, because remember, you have two components, right? You have the system, which is the part of the universe that you're studying, and you have the surroundings, which is everything else. And the sign convention that is almost universally adopted among chemists and teachers and textbooks and everything is that if something is being done on the system by the surroundings, then it carries a positive sign. So if you see words like, you know, on the system, or if you see absorbed, you know, you have a system absorbing heat, that means it's, it's positive, right? And if you have anything like expansion or, or something that's released into the surroundings, uh, that means it's doing, it's being done on the surroundings by the system, and that would be negative. So if you have an expansion, right, your volume is expanding because the system is doing work on the surroundings. So that means your work should carry a negative sign. Very, very good questions. Thank you. Thank you for submitting those questions. I really, really appreciate it.